Hey everyone, the name is Director, and I have a question for all of you, and that question is, what is the meaning of life? Now you might think happiness is the meaning of life. And here's the thing, like there are a lot of people out there that believe happiness is the meaning of life. There is utilitarianism, there is hedonism, there is a lot of different doctrines out there that all talk about happiness in some way or form. I personally think happiness is something meaningful and something positive and something good and something worth striving towards. But I wonder if it's for all of us and I wonder how there come, how come there are people out there that seem to place some kind of value or significance on being sad. How come there are people out there that seem to find sadness, heartbreak, heartache, you know, losing a job, being crushed, being weak, you know, how can some people can take those things and translate them into art or into music or into something beautiful? How come we can take raining weather and look at it and fall into this almost uh, love-struck state of bliss as we look throughout the window listening to sad musical piano pieces, thinking, dreaming, just being in this state of romance. How can we pursue it as something romantic? How can it be a romantic notion to be a little sad or depressed? You know, I wonder about that and I, I can't quite explain it. It's a complex thing, but what I find to me, what I've come to learn is that empty happiness is something very problematic you know that state of being happy in a situation that you shouldn't be happy in i have to believe that happiness requires three conditions to be met first you must be happy second you must be in a situation that will make you happy your environment must have must be able to support that happiness what you see around you must somehow reflect how you feel Third, you have to believe that you are happy. You have to have good, you have to feel that you have good reason to be happy. You have to feel that I understand why I'm happy and I understand what makes me happy. You know, you need those three conditions to be met. You need to be in a good situation. You need to feel happy and you need to understand why you're happy. If you fail at any three of these, you're not really happy. And why I bring this up is because I think this is the root of melancholia, you know. It's not that any of us find uh, melancholia to be in itself an end goal or something positive in itself. But it, it is that we can find it to be a meaningful state. We can find it to be a something significant as a transitionary phase. We can say that it is important to be sad for a while, to wallow or to feel bad about something in order to truly be able to understand and to appreciate true happiness, true beauty, true joy. And it is only when we shut down and ignore the situations that make us sad and the things around us that we find difficult that happiness becomes empty. It is by making sadness something empty that we also make happiness something empty. The message is that happiness must be meaningful. It must be based on something that is real. We must have good reason to be happy. We must have something that makes us believe that happiness is real. You know, we'd have to find that happiness is a real state, not just an illusion. And there is a strong critique against a lot of the happiness ethics, you know, positive thinking, optimism as a delusion. A lot of people argue that optimism, pure optimism without reason to be optimistic is delusional you know to believe that you are happy while not being in a situation you should be happy about such as losing your job or losing somebody you love is to be in a state of delusion it puts you in a situation that makes it unable for you to process your experience and to deal with it appropriately if you can't even recognize that you've had a bad experience how could you possibly move or respond to it or deal with it in an appropriate manner and if you lack good reason, if you don't understand the reason why you're happy, how can you appreciate it? If you don't know why you're happy or what it is that makes you happy, how can you keep on and hold on to what it is that makes you happy? Sure, you can feel happy in the moment, but if you don't understand why, if you don't realize that you love someone and that they are important to you and that you need them to be happy, how, come, how can you make sure that you can retain that state if you don't appreciate your situation? If you 
don't appreciate your workplace, if you don't recognize how important it is as an anchor for you, how can you keep on to that state of bliss and joy when you feel it? You know, those are the important things, you know, to recognize what makes you happy, what makes you feel good about yourself, what puts you in a positive state. And this is where I want to talk about the NF, the idealist type. You know, the NF has been associated with melancholia for a long time. It's Kersey was one of the ones that made the connections. He thought, he thought that NFs were more inclined to melancholia and towards an appreciation of sadness and of darker and deeper and heavier things in life. And here I want to say that it, you can see it like this. Imagine NTs have this lever box of ladders and slides and mathematical symbols and all kinds of different things that you can use to do various things. Now imagine that NFs have this mood board instead. If NTs have this sound, sound board with like buttons and algorithms and various kinds of uh, tasks you can do like uh, instructions, recipes, all kinds of thoughts and things you do to make yourself happy. Put this button, go to a party, then you become happy. NFs have instead a mood board, you know, a board of different symbols and paintings and musical notes and all kinds of things. You push on and you play on this mood board and this mood board kind of plays itself as well because it's kind of originated by harmony, you know, things have to, tones have to fit together. Instruments, music, everything has to line up in a beautiful manner according to some law of symmetry and beauty and what we find to be beautiful. Now, the NF mood board is all about, you know, experience, how we experience life, how we appreciate it, how we value it, the qualitative level of life, you know. Uh, if thinking is about the quantitative level of life, such as how much money do we have or how often do we work, how many hours do we work, where do we work, how far is it to work, you know, all those kinds of things that are in its definition purely logical, you know. Knowing that I want a work that is close by, I want to be able to get to work quicker, I want to have cheaper lottery, I want to have cheaper tickets, prices to get to work faster, you know, all those things, you know, I want to have a girlfriend uh, because uh, having a girlfriend would make me happier, you know, all those recipes, all those thoughts. They're very thinking in their nature. Everything that has to do with how do I solve a problem? How do I fix it? What do I do? What task can I undertake? What steps do I need to do to get a girlfriend? What do I need to uh, get through? You know, all those things are thinking. But feeling is much more difficult in that sense because feeling is not originated by <laughs> those steps. Feeling is originated by what you feel, what you, how you see yourself and how you see other people. What do I think? How do I experience myself? And how do I experience life? You know, as an INFJ, I tend to have two core priorities. The first one is, what kind of person do I want to be? And the second question is, why do I want to be that person? You know, those two questions are at the center of me all the time. You know, I keep wondering about those. I keep thinking and playing with those questions. Like, how do I want to be for other people? What kind of person do I want to be? How do I want to see myself? I keep wondering about those things and I keep working on those aspects. And that has a lot more to do with my personality, my, you could say, persona, my expression, my personal expression, what my interests are, what music I like, what how I dress, how I wear myself. You know, it has to do with so many different things. And it has to do especially with my inner state and how I feel and my experiences and what I think you know, uh, what I find meaningful and what I don't find meaningful. And in that sense, uh, the NF, uh, the feeling type, places all kinds of value and significance on emotion. What you are feeling. It doesn't have to matter if it's good or bad. You know, you can value bad emotions just as you can value good emotions. You can value positive emotions just as you can value sad emotions. As a feeling type, there is nothing that says you will be more inclined to value one than the other. Just experience, just development. And uh, there can be, in a sense, a kind of reminder in feeling. Uh, a feeling type might in be inclined to say that sadness makes you feel alive. At least if I'm sad, at least I know I'm still a human being. At least I know I'm still a person. At least I still know that there is something that is meaningful, something that is important. And that is uh, so important for a feeling type, you know, to recognize what it is that is important to you to be happy. 
without it, you can't be happy, truly happy in that sense. If you look at the thinking type, the thinking type places its importance on something very different. You know, the thinking type might say that um, to be happy, I need to get this promotion or I need to improve at this task, uh, get a better house. You know, it has so much more to do with those core, like uh, how we live life <laughs> aspects, those core mechanical aspects of life, like... Uh, why am I sad? It's because I'm not listening to music. Why am I sad? It's because I'm going through this difficult thing, you know. And a thinking type, all human beings actually have emotions, but who values emotions as a means or an end in itself? And to who is an emotion just a means? To a thinking type, an emotion is just a mean. It just shows you something about your present situation. Then you devise strategies and formulas and various techniques to deal with and to manage this emotion. Your goal as a thinking type is to devise all manners of strategies to make sure that you can keep yourself from feeling bad emotions and to make sure that you can live a successful, happy and uh, good life. And to a feeling type, it has more to do with the uh, emotions at the top of it all, as the end of game of it all. It has to do with what do I want to feel, what do I want to experience, what do I want to believe, what do I want to understand, you know, what do I want to know more about. And um, the feeling type is constantly searching for that in itself. It's not about developing strategies. Strategies are only seen as a means to achieve an emotional goal. I want to feel this, I want to experience this, I want to have this, I want to be this kind of person. And so we devise strategies and the ob objectives to manage all this. But what we're constantly fighting and pushing down, you know, uh, if thinking types uh, are trying to manage uh, their logical aspects of themselves, the feeling type is trying to manage uh, those... Uh, more objective musts, you know, uh, like being able to pay your bills or being able to be on time at work or being able to um, do well or to manage the task that you're required to do or being able to um, deal with bureaucracy or being able to do your job well or being able to do all kinds of things. You have all those issues like that kind of insecurity. Am I good at what I do? Uh, how good am I at what I do? How can I become better at what I do? What if I'm not good enough? What if I get fired? What if I am not a good enough boyfriend? What if I'm not this or that? You know, that ability to measure your state objectively and to realize and to constantly feel that bubbling up of insecurities about your skill and about your abilities and about your technical competence and know-how, you know. Uh, as a feeling type, you're constantly trying to manage that, but you're managing that through the question of who am I? And why am I? And the, the question of uh, what kind of person do I want to be? And how can I become a better person that knows all these things, that can do all these things and that key, can keep their job? And uh, <laughs> it can result in exactly the same objective. You still get promoted or you still, get, uh, you still lose your job. It's just a difference in outcome. It's just a difference in how you do it. Melancholy is not the same as depression because you can be objectively happy and still feel sad. And you can overall feel like good about yourself. You can overall feel that you are living the life you want to live, but you can still feel a little sad over other things. You can still experience like those uh, upswings of negative emotion. You can be in a negative state, but you can still say that, yeah... Uh, it's just a negative state. I'm not actually unhappy. I'm not actually depressed. And, you know, I tend to say that to be depressed, you have to kind of feel like you don't have control anymore of how you feel. It's not just that you've chosen to engage in or to watch uh, a sad movie or to listen to a sad musical piece, but it's that you can't get out of it. It's like you're in a hole that you can't get out of. You know, depression is much more like a hole, you know, that's uh, feeling of being somewhere and not being able to get out. It's a state that is something that we feel helpless about. Depression is not something we can get out of easily. It's not something we can just fix by attitude or something that we can just jump out of. It's not. It's a core difference between just purely going inside a hole and sitting there for a while and then getting out and then being like nothing is wrong. Uh, and uh, falling in it and not being able to get out of it and not knowing how to get out of it. And there is uh, 
I believe something, a strong relationship between, you know, that culture of optimism, false optimism and depression. And I believe there must be some kind of relationship between the two. I believe that pressure to be happy brings up that anxiety, brings up that spiral that makes us feel helpless. You know, it only reminds us of how helpless we feel or how stuck we feel in a bad situation. And the false uh, optimism, the false positivity does nothing to help people who are genuinely depressed. You know, something that I also realize is depression is not something we get out of on our own. Like, um, I don't think anybody has gotten out of depression by isolating themselves and by being alone. No, I think obviously uh, for most people, depression, we, we stop being depressed when we got to know new people. And uh, there's even quotes, you know, if you think you're depressed, think back for a second and realize that maybe you're just surrounded by idiots. There's actually a quote that goes something like that, you know. Being around people that make you feel alone, being around people that make you feel bad about yourself, weak, you know. I, I was um, thinking about, you know, the term pathos, pathage, feeling, you know. It's an, it's an ancient Greek word. And the thing is, uh, pathe has this uh, uh, connection, this association to pathetic in the sense that we tend to find emotions to be pathetic. We tend to find people who have emotions to be a little weak or a little more fragile or a little less capable than other people and that's just an observation that has emerged in society that feeling that uh, feeling is something pathetic and uh, here's something that i find that is so common in all depressed people that tendency to state that your own emotions are pathetic your own feelings are to invalidate your own feelings to say your own feelings don't matter or that they're not important and when people hammer themselves down on this, then they hammer themselves down. And they're so cruel to themselves. And they're just internalizing this culture where bad feelings are pathetic. And people who have them are pathetic. And people who have them are weak. But really, there's something so very human about having emotion. Being able to feel. And there is something so significant about it. Recognize that perhaps there are things about being sad that you value or things that you might actually enjoy about it. And recognize that your emotions are just your emotions, just how you feel. You know, that's what we're moving towards now in the new psychology. We're moving towards acceptance towards your emotional state rather than judgment towards it. Instead of trying to change it, you know, KBT worked for a while, but I think at some point it became less and less effective because we're all so used to it we can change our emotions to some extent but we can't completely change them we can't completely turn them around we can't say the sky is actually red not blue we can't there are things that we can't change things in our essence that we should not seek to fix things about how we feel that there is nothing wrong with and uh, perhaps it's time to start making a list of those things what is it that i want to hold on to about how i feel like right now what is it that i appreciate about it what is it i find important about it because if we don't find it important we don't hold on to it you know there are so many things out there uh, that we just pass through that we don't grab onto that we don't see don't care about and those are unimportant things but generally the things that we come to hold on to are things that we find important and everything else that we hold on to or just, just feel heavy, you know, when you grab onto something you don't want, it feels heavy, it feels hard to carry, it feels, it feels like it's just a weight on your shoulders, something you don't want. And uh, when you can find those things and you can let go of those things, it's also easier to grab onto those things that you actually want. So that's my thought on melancholy and on being sad and on depression. But I really wonder what the real relationship is between optimism and depression. Does false optimism create or increase or make depression worse for some people? Does it uh, take people out of depression? Is false optimism a legitimate strategy for managing emotions? What is happiness really? Is happiness happiness even if you don't have good reason to be happy? Can you legitimately be happy over being in a situation that you don't like or don't enjoy? Can you force or fake 
And to what extent can you fake? It's really a question of can we turn the sky red rather than blue? I don't think it's possible, but what do you think? <laughs>